Hello, my name is uh, Samuel Omodeng. I'm a teacher of biology and chemistry, and I've been teaching for the last 18 years. I welcome you to these science education videos, which have been prepared by the Science Education Communications video, SECOV in short. These uh, videos cover four science subjects, namely physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. I believe that as you watch and use these videos, you will improve in your performance in science subjects. And I believe that you will be able to enjoy learning science subjects at all levels. You're welcome. Our next consideration is uh, on indicators. And here we're going to look at extraction of pigments from flowers to be used as indicators. And as you can see, we have a collection of uh, flowers which we are going to, from which we are going to extract the, uh, the extracts. And here we go. We begin with the hibiscus flower. We begin by grinding it in a mortar and pestle. We add some ethanol to dissolve out the pigment or the colored substance. So we grind thoroughly until the petals of the flower are very fine. Huh? And uh, in case we want to get the pH, we just compare that color with the one in the picture on the bottle. As you can see, it's uh, the extreme pH. So that's how we use indicators. Now, in this experiment, we we now look at quantitative analysis, and this is also known as titration. Those are the apparatus that we use. So we top up the solution in the burette. And Nine. you take the reading, it's 13.7 cubic centimeters. Then you continue adding the base to the acid. That is where we end, and the end point is 33.7. In this setup, we are using a burette with a different tap, which is turned and this time we're adding the acid to the base in the conical flask. And the end point means it becomes colorless. As you can see, as you can see there. Okay. This is a separation of sulfur from iron filings using a magnet. And, uh, and with the help of a magnet, which is placed below the sheet, as we move the magnet forwards and backwards, you can observe what is happening. The iron filings are getting separated from the sulfur. So we do that until we get most of the iron filings on one end of the sheet of paper. And then we can collect and separate them from the sulfur. The Bunsen burner. We shall look at the flames of a Bunsen burner. This is a Bunsen burner, which is an apparatus used for heating substances in the laboratory. This is a uh, luminous flame with the air holes closed, and that is a non luminous flame which is produced when the air holes are open. It's blue in color and it's very hot. Hydrogen. Preparation of hydrogen gas and testing for hydrogen gas. 
this is a setup for preparation of hydrogen gas in the flask and as you can see the delivery tube is delivering the gas from the we are now going to test for hydrogen gas and we use a burning splint and there we go a quick sound in the first jar because it's fairly pure again we use a burning splint in the second jar pop sound is produced that confirms that the gas is hydrogen gas and that is how we test for hydrogen gas we are looking at oxygen and first of all we shall look at the preparation of oxygen and next how to test for oxygen and that is the setup that we use for preparing oxygen and here we are using hydrogen peroxide and manganese for oxide so we add the uh, peroxide onto the manganese for oxide already as you can see there are bubbles uh, being produced there are bubbles of a colorless gas being produced and the gas jar is getting filled with the gas meanwhile the water is being displaced from the gas jar meanwhile in the conical flask the reaction is going on there is a fervescence the first gas jar is about to get full gas jar is full we are now collecting the second uh, gas jar and we are testing the first gas jar um, yeah, that shows that there wasn't any gas there that is the second gas jar and that glowing splint is bursting into flames and that is how we test for oxygen sodium reaction of sodium with water in this experiment we we get a piece of sodium and drop it in cold water as you can see unlike magnesium sodium reacts with cold water and as it does so it forms a silvery ball sodium that's a, a much bigger piece uh, also note that uh, a hissing sound a hissing sound is produced as the sodium reacts with the water. Reaction, reaction between sodium thiosulfate and dilute hydrochloric acid. In this experiment, we use this apparatus as with the help of a, a watch to time, we add hydrochloric acid as we set so as soon as it becomes invisible we stop the the watch and we take note of the time that will give us the the speed of this reaction between these two substances that is sodium chloride uh, sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid so it's just about to disappear just about to become invisible so just about at that point is when we stop the watch and we take note of the reading it's about 45 seconds <laughs>